Now, Donald Trump announced his White House bid, uh, this White House bid, uh, around 13 months ago. Nikki Haley was next, launching her bid in February of this year. Today, we are seven days from the new year, 21 days out from the Iowa caucuses. So all of the Republican candidates are waking up this Christmas morning and should be facing what kind of reality with their campaigns. Joining us now is CNN political commentator, Republican strategist Alice Stewart, kindly going to play along with what I'm calling the good and bad lists of 2023, keeping with the Christmas theme. So, Alice, for Donald Trump, what is the good reality that his campaign is facing right now? Well, first off, you're on the good list, I'm, I'm sure, Kate. So you're <laughs> Your lists be in, are in messed up shape. then, Alice. <laughs> 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 uh, look, it, it's exciting to think that 21 days from now, Republicans and I will be traveling over the river and through the woods to a caucus location near them. But it's it's coming, and this is an exciting time. The good thing for Donald Trump is his steady lead. It's one thing for you to uh, be ahead in one poll and things change, but he has a commanding steady lead in these polls in all of these states by uh, over 50 percent uh, in, in many of these polls. And the fact that he's able to maintain that momentum is good. Look, his base is not going anywhere. They are committed to him. They are standing firm uh, despite all of the other issues that we just outlined, uh, all of the legal issues facing him. His base is, is committed. Uh, the, the reality is there are many Republicans that are looking to turn the page and get away from uh, Donald Trump and the past grievances that he is uh, really campaigning on and ready to turn the page for a new fresh face. So uh, that's one thing that uh, he does have to keep in mind. But that steady lead has not changed since really since he got in the race. That's exactly right. And then for Nikki Haley, the good must be for her the surge in New Hampshire. What else? Well, so the fact that she has uh, c continued to tighten up the polls, you know, the non-Trump uh, candidates have been back and forth. She is uh, now doing well. Uh, in uh, New Hampshire as well as uh, in in Iowa. And, and here's what the good thing for her is that she understands that in order to not just win in this primary, to win in the general election, you need a more nuanced message. And Haley has managed to certain issues that are diehard issues for Republicans, like the life issue and the abortion issue. She recognizes that in order to broaden the electorate, not just in the primary, but into the general election, she's changed the messaging. So we're not talking about abortion bans. We're talking about abortion limits and what is an appropriate uh, time to have a conversation about uh, when abortions sh should be uh, uh, desirable or preferred for, for women who are in that situation. That's a better message heading into the, the general election. And she yeah. understands we need to stop demonizing people on this topic and talk about limits and, as opposed to bans. There's a lot that I would say Nikki Haley's waking up to on Christmas morning thinking is the good. What's the bad reality that she needs to be facing? A fractured field, Kate. With so many candidates out there, the there's the pie only goes so far. With Donald Trump at a steady 50, with so many candidates in the race, that div divides up uh, the number of votes that she could actually get. And I think as we uh, winnow the field, uh, that potentially could be in her favor. Look, here's the thing out of Iowa. You want to have a good, strong uh, finish out of Iowa, second or even third with Donald Trump. But Iowa isn't necessarily about picking the winner. It's about winnowing the field. So as we get through Iowa in 21 days, some of the candidates are going to have to face the really difficult reality that maybe it's time to to throw their support behind someone else. So, we'll you know, is, is, the sooner so we can consolidate it's like you're behind talking one person, about, the better. You're talking about Ron DeSantis without talking about Ron DeSantis here. Is it harder to find a good reality for Ron DeSantis than a, than a, bad, than a bad one for his campaign Look, this morning? Not, this isn't really where you want to be at this point, when he's had a, a, a strong second place in the polls for some, some time. He, he should be making his closing arguments right now. And he is doing that in Iowa at these town halls and these events. He's making the case for why he is a, an electable candidate. He is a proven <laughs> winner. He is a younger generation and optimistic vision. The problem is uh, in the media, he's getting so much coverage on the palace intrigue with staff uh, departures and firings and, and so much of that and finger pointing by former staffers. That is, that's not desirable when you're trying to really capitalize on the earned media you're getting outside of the real work he's doing on the ground. Look, he's put in the work. He's been to all 99 counties and he's really working to meet these people. But when, when this palace intrigue really not just makes national news, you have local papers covering this, it, it does 
uh, raise some concerns. But he does have a strong commit to caucus operation uh, in the works, and the goal is really reinforcing that over the next three weeks and making sure the people that have said they're going to come out do come out on that exactly. night. Exactly. It's great to see you, Alice. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. You too, Kate. Merry Christmas. Thank you.